This is a life-size Lego crafting table made to celebrate the 15th anniversary of Minecraft. Inside is an entire tiny world with tons of mobs, biomes, and structures. I really like how much was just crammed in this thing. So in this video, I'm gonna build, review, and upgrade a whole micro Minecraft world out of Lego. This set isn't the first to try out micro scale, more on that later, but it's by far the most comprehensive. Featuring eight different characters with a villager, witch, skeleton, a pig and cow, Alex, and most importantly, a creeper and Steve. There are even extra parts for most of them to make duplicates. These stands were added so the figures had a place to go with a bunch of different splash text right out of the game. Or they can be used to populate one of the 12 different biomes, like the villager in the village, witch with a swamp hut, skeleton in the mine shaft, and so on. The build is split into six different chunks, built at a super small scale of two plates equaling one block. All of it starts at the ice spikes biome, featuring the smallest igloo I've ever seen. That snow melts down and floats into the river going past the taiga biome, through the caves, around the village, into the desert, finally feeding into the swamp. Moving everything out of there, including the cherry grove, you can see the deep dark, hosting a lush cave, ancient city, and even some shelf. Unfortunately, at a bit of a loss, there is no tiny warden hiding in there. Getting rid of the last chunk, it unveals a map of the whole world. Altogether, it makes for one of the best Minecraft sets ever. If you told me I could only ever pick one LEGO Minecraft set, this one would probably be it. The buildable iron golem is a close second, but this features more from the game than any other set LEGO's made thus far. Just don't pick it up like I did. This set isn't only a celebration of a 15 year old game, but a continuation of LEGO's first ever Minecraft set. The crafting table's interior is based on the original kit from 2012 and its spin-offs. When you compare them all, it's kind of crazy to see how much the line has evolved, but how these old ones did a lot far better. Let me explain. There are four different themes. The forest representing spawn with a simple wood or maybe even a dirt house built for Steve's first night. It's built in the plains biome, nestled at the foot of a small mountain with patches of sand, some trees, a river, and even a small lava stream. All that sitting on top of tons of unexplored caves crawling with creepers just waiting to be discovered in mine. But have you noticed the issue yet? The scale is all out of whack. Remember how the size of one Minecraft block equals two plates? That doesn't fit here. For example, both the Steve and Creeper micro mobs have been updated looking much better. Steve's face is now the new right color and has been shrunk in half, while the Creeper's head is now at the top instead of the middle. Those are great updates, but the originals are too tall and these new ones are a plate too short. Thankfully, that is a super easy fix, but these next things won't be as simple. The village was the second set to come out and might be the best out of the four. The majority of the footprint is taken up by a village with two different homes and a small farm. Running around the area is a pig and a villager. The last corner is home to a snowy, jagged peaks mountain. That is way too much of a mouthful. I had to write that down. With the substructure being much more interesting than the last one with mine shafts and mine cart tracks running through the whole bottom. Decorating the darkness are torches and hidden chests, and there are even two small blocks of TNT that can blow up the cobblestone or even a zombie. But the thing Things that make this set so cool are also still a problem. The scale, once again, is all over the place, with this mine shaft being way too big and the village houses being so small that there isn't even a door anywhere. Looking at the old and new sets together, despite there being 12 years between them, it's weird to see both versions still have buildings that are too small for anyone to fit. Even though every single one of these sets failed at the scale they were trying to achieve, I still quite enjoy the look of them. I'll just have to keep it in mind when I'm building my own to have the right dimensions. The next set LEGO released was the Nether, and at the time it was quite accurate, containing two ghasts and one zombie pigman, not piglin, pig man. Coming out in 2013, the Nether update was years away, so no piglin, no interesting biomes, not even a bastion, even though this looks just like one, it's actually another fortress. The only thing that you can find here is gravel, lava, glowstone, and a pretty neat nether portal. It's a little skinny here, but still recognizable. Ghasts are way too small, and I tried fixing them, but... I think they look better tiny. This one with some heavy modifications or potentially an entirely new rebuild might be perfect size. I would like to test it, but unfortunately I do not have one, but I am able to fix one of the giant mobs. The final micro world set is a chunk right from the end. There are plenty of endermen, obsidian pillars, the exit portal, and even the ender dr No, that, no. That's not a dragon. This is less of an in-game final boss and more of a decomposing dead that. Out of all of these sets, this is far and away the weakest thing here. It was the original reason why I wanted to take a look at these sets in my last video, and now it'll be the starting point of me correcting all the issues I have with these sets. The first time around, I made some hugely significant upgrades to this thing. Out of the whole mob, all you need to save and reuse are the eyes and the wings. Everything else can go. Bulking up the legs and tail already make it look much more like a dragon. The body is over double the original size with rows and rows of dorsal plates. I didn't have to make too many modifications to the head, but leaving the bottom plate slightly open not only makes it look like a mouth, but you can also add the dragon's breath attack. Now that the dragon looks and feels way more substantial, its territory needs a bit more Oomph. The dragon's perch is about half the size it should be. The walls need to be a plate taller, the tower is a block too small, the portal needs a bit more breathing room, and replacing the dragon's aid with its round part finishes it all off. The dragon and the portal, in my so very not humble opinion, look way better now. Well, 
Okay, well, one actually looks like what it's supposed to, at least. Going backwards, I'm gonna make some small adjustments to the nether. I tried to make the gas larger last time, but it just really does not look right. Moving on, the nether portal is all right. The top should be smoothed out and replacing the trans purple bricks with some glitter bricks better sells the portal's effects. So technically the portal has to be at least four blocks wide to be accurate to the game. But for some reason when doing it in Lego, it looks, it looks a little, it's just too wide. I don't know, the skinny one is way more aesthetically pleasing, but this one is, more accurate to the game. Let me know which one you would go with. I think having a counterpart to the in nether nether portal in the outside main world would be a neat way to tie the two together. But instead of just having a normal generic one, a ruined portal next to the village would stick out way more. I made one of the more common ruined structures that pop up with a gold block on top and some crying obsidian in the form of purple plates and a chest at the base. Having these builds next to each other is kind of making for a decent start to a small world if I ever filled the spaces in between. When I started working on this, I didn't really have an idea what to do with the first set that came out. With the new updated mobs, they're all fixed and no longer too tall. The hut is fine, being the only building that actually fits characters. Nothing else really sticks out. Auspiciously, my friend Firebird Bricks or Caleb reached out recently saying that he was working on a Minecraft mech army video. That is so much cooler than what I'm doing right now. One of his builds happens to be a tiny micro mech for the micro Steve mob and he asked me to make an accompanying creeper mech to face off against it. All right, time to show off my terrible art skills and my super linty shirt. My idea is to make something less bipedal and more animalistic with four legs and no arms. Just imagine there's a, a, a fourth leg behind there. I'd also want some sort of TNT launcher or cannon as its main attacking weapon, but I don't wanna make it too big. Caleb said his mech is about two and a half inches tall, so I wanna keep mine around there. And this little thing is what I came up with. I guess it's kind of a bit underwhelming with how small it is and how big I... I'm just gonna show you. <laughs> the legs and hips are the same structure used in the buildable creeper set. I added a platform for a seat and launcher to sit and it took some tinkering, but I was able to make a small cannon that fires little blocks of TNT, just like the ones from the village set. The whole apparatus sits on a turntable, so there's some movement to it. And to make it look like it's being constantly fed ammunition, I made a chain of TNT blocks with various clip elements. The effect kind of works. With the creeper pilot in place, the whole thing comes right under three inches. I haven't seen the entirety of Caleb's army yet, but I would hope that my little creeper crawler could take out his Steve micro mech. And when you're done watching this video, you should go watch his video using the link in the description. Now, time to address some grievous mistakes in the crafting table. Amongst all of the builds, two things really stick out, the igloo and witch's hut. Both structures are recognizable and pretty adorable at this scale. But unless my math is off, which given my school history, it probably is. I don't think Steve or any other mob is fitting in those builds. And I'd like to try my hand at making, you know, mobs be able to go inside of a, a building. The hobble itself isn't too hard to make as long as you pay close attention to the different various corners that make it appear to have a round shape. I didn't realize how small this igloo was until I finished mine. Comparatively, there is no comparison. I put a black brick to cover up the inside because the interior structure is a bit, well, it's not great. Not at all. I think with another attempt, I could open it up and maybe even add the secret basement. And I guess my original challenge of having it block accurate so figures could properly go in it was kind of nullified there because I put a, I mean, they could still fit. It's, hmm. The swamp hut should be a bit more straightforward. The hardest part for this one was finding parts that aren't too round, but could look like a fence for the porch and windows. Once on its stand, the hut really looks like the end game model. I had to make some sacrifices, specifically with the roof because building Minecraft stairs this small is impossible. <laughs> or I'm just, I just suck. I, I probably am just a bad builder. It's hard to see, but I did do a proper inside with this one. There's a crafting table, cauldron, and a mushroom, everything a witch might need. Having a swamp hut without a swamp feels, a, it does feel a little out of place. <laughs> so using part of the swamp from my last video, I made a chunk to house my hut. I decided to use a mix of the original swamp with grass and oak trees and the new one with mud and mangrove trees. With all the sets, these new mods, and some of my biomes from the last video, my micro world is really starting to come together. If you'd like to see it continue to grow, make sure to subscribe because next time I have some bigger plans in mind. Also, go watch Firebird's video. It's, it's way more fun of an idea than what I just did.